hear me? Okay, cool. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm really happy I was able to organize this crypto liberation community meetup. Uh, so the thing is why I decided to do, to do that. So the first thing is that crypto liberation movement is booming everywhere. At least I, I perceive it in this way. And also crypto liberation communities are, are, are growing in many different uh, countries, especially in, we can see it in Europe. Uh, not only in Czech Republic, Slovakia, but also in Germany, in Spain, in Austria, and I hope in any, many, many other countries. And that was the reason that I decided to, to invite representatives of these crypto, crypto liberation communities to this discussion panel. And uh, all these people will present you their project, their place, they are building, and also the interesting project they are uh, they are focused on, and I strongly believe this may be a motivation for you to join their communities, or maybe to start the your new own one community. So, firstly, uh, let me introduce all my friends here. So, from the left, I start from the left. Yuri Bednar. Yura is representative of uh, Parallel Police in Bratislava, Slovakia. Smuggler. Uh, Smuggler is uh, from Berlin, uh, founder of Anorplex and uh, Container Community. <coughs> um, Jörg Platzer from a uh, like famous place, Room 77 in Berlin. So as, as you can see, like crypto liberation community is really strong in Berlin. Uh, Martin uh, Leskovian. Martin Leskovian is uh, representative of Parallel Police in Prague. He's also the, the speaker of our contemporary artistic group Stohoven. Then uh, Nelson Menela. Nelson uh, is founder of Parallel Police in Barcelona. Uh, we are really look, looking forward for to this beautiful place and definitely want to visit it very soon. You will. You can tell us more information about about this project. Then Gideon Galash. Gideon. Uh, Gideon is the founder of Blockchain Hotel in uh, in Essen, in uh, Essen in, in in Germany. And Tomas Kanot. He is the founder of New Parallel Police in Kosice, Slovakia. So, guys, thank you a lot for coming here, for being here. And now it's your turn. So I would like to ask you to present your community maybe in five minutes, ten minutes. Some of you have slides, so don't hesitate to use them. <coughs> That's the of course you can. Hello, hello. Okay, perfect. Um, so I have some uh, pictures from Parallelpolis uh, Bratislava, uh, Parallel Napolis. Uh, we uh, tend to use uh, the local language version, so in Barcelona it will, it will be Polis Paralela, so we kind of try to adapt to um, uh, local environment. And um, here you can, see, uh, you can see the Bitcoin coffee, as you can see it's, a, it's a one, uh, uh, one uh, larger building, uh, we don't have a, um, uh, a good separation of uh, coffee. So in the back you see Institute of Crypto Anarchy and uh, and our co-working spaces on the on the small um, a small uh, floor that you can uh, climb up uh, the stairs. Uh, we call it the moon because we believe that every step you take to the moon brings crypto to the moon. <laughs> um, and um, uh. Uh, what I want, why, why I wanted to show you this picture is because uh, you can recognize the concepts of the original parallel police in, in Prague. Uh, we try to uh, replicate uh, all the ideas and the interactions between the spaces. I, I think uh, uh, it is very um, uh, important that uh, these uh, parts of parallel police, uh, police um, work together. So uh, 
I don't think it makes much sense to create just an institute of crypto anarchy because you can have a hacker space and uh, it could be much cheaper even if you if you want to just do talks you can uh, rent uh, um, a room with a projector and do talks in, in a pub anywhere it doesn't matter so um, what makes parallel police is uh, using these interactions of different parts and uh, and kind of letting it interact. But also, uh, you can see that this place is very different to Prague. So um, the reason is that, uh, that the space uh, uh, and the, uh, um, the space itself, but also uh, the community is generated by the people that are there and people have different interests, different approaches to things. So um, we try to be different as well we try to um, uh, try to experiment with different approaches and uh, we hope that with all these crypto communities we can uh, get inspired so for example after discussions with smuggler and uh, other people from berlin we realized uh, that our naive uh, uh, version of oh we will liberate everyone because that's obviously what everyone needs more freedom everyone is striving for that uh, we realized that uh, actually most people don't care about freedom at all and uh, it's about finding the right people who uh, who actually strive for more freedom and it's our job to show them how to uh, how to achieve it how to how to get it so we also um, uh, do uh, talks uh, with uh, speakers this is Pavel's talk on uh, getting uh, more financial freedom, I think, um, uh, taken from the moon. Uh, so uh, there's uh, some some other other talks, um, uh, and uh, what we are trying to build here is something that is inspired by the the idea of Parapolis, uh, by the the physical space here in Prague, uh, but we also try to. Uh, implement other ideas from other communities such as uh, you will hear about um, we also uh, uh, finally painted uh, uh, the building black and put up the logo I think uh, this is very interesting part of what uh, uh, what we do and what is actually different to other communities that uh, try to stay more private so uh, a lot of um, uh, people when they uh, when they uh, talk about parallel police they they say okay uh, the only reason why you can do this idea of parallel society is because you live in a free liberal democracy and it allows parallel societies that's not true uh, it allows us to have a nice building with a sign uh, but parallel societies were actually common in uh, horrible regimes in uh, in uh, states uh, 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 like uh, uh, like China, uh, there were Tongs, which were temporary uh, autonomous zones and communities of people that could not put a sign on the building. They were hiding from the state. And uh, what I wanted to mention that uh, this strategy works in any kind of environment. I'm uh, uh, I'm. Uh, positive that it could work in a, in, a, in a much worse, much less free societies, uh, but the form would be uh, different. And uh, we are all here, uh, these people, we are uh, trying to find the form that works in their particular environment and the, in their particular community. So that's why I think this is very inspiring. Uh, we like to relax, we, uh, we do uh, competitions about uh, logos and merch so we kind of try to uh, grow and experiment with other things uh, we also had a visit from the police in our opening party um, which was very interesting because i'm sure that they uh, believe that they landed on the moon because they couldn't comprehend what <laughs> what is going on and what the other people are talking about so uh, they were happy to leave um, <laughs> if you <laughs> Uh, um, if you uh, would like to experience the space, uh, the best thing you can do is to come to Bratislava and visit it um, uh, during an event. If you cannot do it or are 
um, of, uh, are a proponent of uh, an eco-religion and you think that uh, it's uh, uh, that you're killing our planet by traveling to Bratislava, then you can uh, <laughs> try our VR experience where you can uh, just see it with your phone and kind of look around. So. Uh, uh, if the few pictures doesn't make, uh, don't make uh, justice to the place, you can explore it yourselves. But please come; that's much better. So thank you. Thank you a lot. <coughs> I have to stand as well. Okay, um, I'm from Berlin, and we do something a little bit different than Parallelny and Parallelna Polis and all the other policies. Um, we're specifically trying to um, experiment with shipping containers community and combine that into a model to run temporary autonomous zones. Uh, next slide. Ah, okay. So, um, number one, what we're trying to do out of those containers is to create a surveillance-free or low surveillance zone. Um, we're having countermeasures that we're developing against surveillance, uh, like even acoustic surveillance and video and whatever. Um, we try to have a little bit of our own security so we don't need to call the police if things go wrong. Um, we're trying to experiment a little bit with how one could run physical communities um, without the state. That is one of the reasons we use the uh, shipping containers, because you can own your own container, your own piece of the whole, and if you don't like it anymore or you don't like your neighbor, you can just move and you don't have to uh, involve complicated court processes or um, fight publicly or anything like that. Um, because we're, we're trying to keep it as state-free as possible, including what can be done there or cannot be done there. Um, we use the shipping containers that allow us to, should the escalation with the state become a little bit too high, we can pack up everything and move somewhere else without losing capital. Um, one thing we really suck at, but we really try it, and that is building community. So we're not very big, we're like 10, 11, 12 people or something like that. Um, however, those people that we have are really cool and we have really good uh, relationships. Um, and there are a lot of like smaller projects in the context of building such a TAZ. So uh, thinking about anti-surveillance technology, but also um, fixing roofs and building roofs and solar panels and uh, famous toilet projects. <laughs> Um, this is uh, from one of the meetups we did. Um, you see the containers from the outside. Um, some of them are built out, some are not. Uh, they will be soon, hopefully. We're saying that for the last two years. Um, and uh, we're having an open air event there. And very famous is our steak reactor. So uh, if you like meat, um, we have the best way to make meat. So. Okay, next slide. <laughs> <laughs> this thing doesn't work. <laughs> Give me one more, please. Then you have just two slides. Yeah, they're useless. <laughs> no, no, uh, forward. Yeah. Okay, it's not this thing, it's my presentation format. Anyways, I, I'm gonna continue without slides. Um, apart from building your shipping containers and everything that belongs to it, um, we have um, a membership-based model, um, so you can become a member after convincing us that um, you're cool and we convincing you that you're cool, uh, we are cool. Um, yeah. And exactly, more. Uh, go to the um, last slide. And um, 
It involves a fee, of course. There's a small fee. Um, <laughs> the famous containers, uh, toilets. <laughs> then um, we have weekly meetups uh, where we do uh, work and uh, social get together and stuff like that. Uh, we have a monthly public meetup um, that we actually announce on meetup.com. Uh, it's the uh, cypherpunk meetup. Um, plus that we're a space where our members can hang out anytime they want, 24 seven, uh, hack, um, sleep there, which apparently is a common uh, behavior, um, or just you know have a good time with people you trust. Thank you. Thank you, Lars. Jörg, your turn. Is it working? It's working. Uh, yeah, so to be quite honest, I didn't actually know that Room 77 was a crypto liberation community until I received the invite uh, <laughs> to this panel. Yeah. Um, but I think what we also can see here that uh, crypto liberation communities, whatever the definition is, look quite different, quite interesting actually. If you would see, if I would have brought pictures of Room 77 now, um, what I just found really interesting is that the uh, parallel polis and other places in Eastern Europe all look really stylish, designish, and clean, <laughs> whereas every place <laughs> in Berlin <laughs> looks like a Shit. scrap metal place. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's intentional. Uh, it must <laughs> have been some kind of aesthetics. I think actually uh, we Berliners serve the cypherpunk aesthetics better than you uh, <laughs> over here. But <laughs> anyway. Um, so yeah, I brought no presentation. I can I can just uh, spend a few minutes to talk about Room 77, what that is. Um, 15 years ago, a friend of mine and I opened a bar and restaurant just for fun. We wanted to have our own place for a, for a, a year or so we, where we could play music and yeah, have our own bar, which was very easily doable in Berlin and in certain parts of Berlin at the time because you could like really rent a place, a bar, a restaurant for kind of pocket money for change. Okay. Um, it's, um, yeah, obviously the place ran for a little longer than a year than it was planned, um, which had to do with the gastronomical success of it. Anyhow, five years later or six years later, Bitcoin comes around. It was actually around the time where we started thinking about we should finally sell that place. Um, how did this rock and roll bar and restaurant then turn into this kind of hub for Bitcoin, crypto, blockchain people? Um, the, the, the initial... Uh, moment was when we started accepting Bitcoin to find out that we were literally the first bricks and mortar business on the planet that did so. And back at the time, um, any media coverage about Bitcoin um, was literally about drug dealers and, and tax evasion. If you have an article about Bitcoin, the only images you could see was a person like this from behind, uh, in front of a screen with source code on it. Fuck. You know. Um, anyhow, uh, when word got around, or let me let me say first for the back then really really tiny Bitcoin community. I mean, you you literally knew everybody on the planet somehow through the forums. You knew every project anybody was doing uh, on Bitcoin. So uh, first of all, the, 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 f the early Bitcoin community um, was absolutely um, delighted about the, the fact that um, somebody is actually selling something physical for, for Bitcoin. And um, the uh, biggest effect though was the media coverage because that place then started attracting media from all over the planet just for the simple reason because they could go to an actual place and talk to actual people who would show their face into the camera um, and who would explain like that they're normal people doing normal stuff like buying dinner or getting drunk and at the end of the night pay in Bitcoin. So we were a big source of pictures um, for the media back then. 
So uh, these things develop their own dynamics, and of course the place attracted uh, Bitcoiners um, from all over Berlin, then from all over Germany, and then there were, I think it was the summers of 2012 and, thir and 13, we called like the crypto summers in Berlin, because you had developers from all over the world coming to Berlin to work together in unannounced hackathons and stuff like that. Anyhow, that's how, that's how that place turned into what I now learned is a crypto liberation community. Um, what is it today? Because I think uh, this was just the history of the room. Um, I think today it actually deserves that name because um, the absolute main focus of the place and the majority of its customers are Bitcoiners, a few Ethereum guys, <laughs> Monero uh, people. Um, we have, the, I, th I believe, the, the longest running monthly meetup on the planet, still running in Berlin. Um, on the first Thursday of the month, we have a Monero meetup. On the second Thursday, we have the secret Bitcoin meetup on um, the third. Secret in, in so far, do never mention it on social media, please. That, uh, the, the secret meetup is literally there because when the Bitcoin price is high, we have so many journalists on the official meetup that Bitcoiners actually don't want to go there anymore. And then when the price is high, Bitcoiners go to the secret. Um, anyhow, <laughs> um, but what, what we also uh, have and what I find absolutely incredible is... Oh, Jesus, there's people having pictures of the room here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, what I find really absolutely fascinating is that uh, Room 77 has turned into a place where people experiment with new technologies in Bitcoin. So it's it, quite regularly when you have a new technology, let, let, let me put it this way, the first mobile wallet was built by Andreas Schildbach because he saw the need to be able to go to this place and pay for his dinner without having to bring his laptop. Like, you know, you, you have this kind of experimenting field. You think like, wow, there's Bitcoin. Uh, it's going to conquer the world. And it's there and it's finished. And then the first person wants to pay in Bitcoin at your bar and they start typing in 34 digits <laughs> into their laptop uh, and then want to send a transaction. And the laptop says, oh, that's not a valid Bitcoin address. Anyhow, so <laughs> we had the first Bitcoin ADM, I think, in Europe there. We had uh, people... We had a lightning hackathon, not at Room 77, but in Berlin, organized by Fulmo. Um, but uh, the guys there turned up, came there on a Friday and said, hey, on Sunday evening, we would like to be able to pay at Room 77 via the lightning network. And they worked for 48 hours and came on Sunday evening, installed their lightning solution, and we could pay uh, via lightning. Um, <coughs> Actually, the bottom line, I think, is that what turned my bar into the place that it is now today, that wasn't me. That was actually the community that started developing around it. I, I think rooms, what Room 77 did was merely provide a very early platform that was very welcoming, that was very inviting, um, to people where people could feel free um, and and saw the potential that they could bring in their own ideas and build their own tech there, and this is this is going till today. We have like every year I see new members, new very creative and productive members in that community coming in. I meet new people all the time. Uh, and after a while, you realize that is such a beautiful contribution to this community. Um, yeah, so as I said, bottom line is we provided a platform <coughs> that just hit the sweet spot and every Bitcoiner was like, this is the kind of place where I want to go. The interesting thing is, uh, to say that at the end, what I find out is that the good people, or let's say, you have a lot of people come in, you have a lot of people come and then leave the community again. It's the not so cool people who come and go, and it's the really cool people who come and stay. <coughs> um, which I also think can only, the only reason for that can be that 
it is literally a community with its own kind of ethos and morals, ethics um, and ideals. And people uh, who cannot quite follow these, yeah, just come look at it. Uh, probably lose some money because they thought they come here to uh, become Bitcoin millionaires or something like that. Then they don't do that and they leave again. Uh, that's about all I can say about Room 77 in this context, I believe. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Parallel Polis Prague. Um, I would like to uh, mention for the beginning that I, I don't have any slides because obviously you can attend all the premises of Parallel Polis and see them with your own eyes. Uh, so I would like to sum up um, some recent news and new projects that we try will uh, that we hope will ha uh, will have uh, impact uh, on the community life and will hopefully enlarge it and deepen it. So the first one uh, that is presented for the first time here um, in in a more uh, like defined version is the decent track that you can see on the courtyard. Uh, Decent Track is a concept that um, targets primarily towns and cities uh, or events like festivals uh, all around Czech Republic. This was this year's mission to to open it and to test it. And uh, the the idea is basically to um, make a compressed concept of Parallel Polis and its program on wheels and be able to to come and set it up. Uh, anywhere basically so today uh, this year we have tested uh, like four times on some uh, festivals how how it works and how people react the results are very good so we've uh, decided to make next steps and now we are going to uh, uh, push uh, crowdfunding to uh, establish the track and see where uh, communities deserve <laughs> the track to come. When I say deserve, it means that uh, we will uh, meet some activity uh, of local people that will really be attracted and and interested uh, the track to come and will help us to organize all necessary uh, measures to uh, to do so, which means to help us to find a place, uh, to participate on funding, to to help uh, with the program and so on. So it's not only uh, during Parallel Police as a service, but uh, we we want to head primarily to to s towns and cities and places where already is some at least bunch of people. Uh, that uh, is interested in whatever digital freedom, uh, crypto, whatever, and uh, or any aspect of Parallel Polis and would like to uh, have a trial version of Parallel Polis in their place. So uh, we we plan to have like uh, something like week till months uh, uh, stops uh, in different places, and we hope that next year we will uh, cover a couple of cities and places in Europe. And then there are lots of w very wild plans where else the truck can go, but um, it's, it's a question of future development. Next uh, significant project that uh, has been launched n not, uh, not uh, so long ago is Media Hub or Media Lab, sorry, uh, that is uh, uh, underground, um, uh, under uh, Bitcoin Coffee in Parallel Polis, where uh, pr previously 3D Printing Lab was. And uh, Media Lab uh, is now, uh, consists of a uh, uh, streaming, streaming place where you can come and uh, stream with uh, professional uh, equipment, uh, like, like immediately almost so uh, so it it should enable to create more and more video content and podcasts and so on and then there is a small uh, working place where we would like to attract uh, journalists to come and work and we are gonna uh, offer um, uh, some temporary programs like a couple of months of uh, let's say internship or training connected with uh, practical work in uh, uh, in technical and m 
a little bit more sophisticated and, and complicated topics we are talking about because we feel that media coverage of topics we we deal with in Pearl Polis uh, is still quite poor and and not um, not educated so we would like to improve it and to give journalists um, ways how how to refer about it better and of course uh, the security of journalists and their independence as, as well big topic worldwide as well so it's it's also uh, some some direction media lab would like to work uh, for this purpose we've joined with uh, a fund for uh, independent independence of journalists so uh, th they help uh, us to define what really uh, interest the journalists. Uh, next next place we've uh, uh, recently opened is uh, newly newly gained places uh, right right in the next building uh, beside Pearl Polis. Uh, we've received the keys a couple of days ago, and the purpose of this place uh, will be. Uh, extension of uh, our our co-working place, but uh, it will work on a little bit different principles. We call it for now a curated co-working, which means that we will uh, select uh, projects that will be present in 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 this co-working, and those projects will be should be more uh, project based, more more related to the core topics of parallel policy which means uh, crypto technologies, anonymization, privacy, uh, decentralization, and so, and so on. So we will try to create uh, a more exclusive uh, place and hopefully one day it will develop into some incubator or something like this for, for crypto projects. Uh, on this we test a, co a cooperation with uh, one of our sponsors, the Rockaway blockchain. So we will see how far this cooperation will, will go and uh, how far this project uh, will, will uh, continue. I would like to mention that in parallel Polis, the basic uh, way we start projects is not that we completely plan everything, how it will be in one year, two years, three years, to have a budget and everything, because usually when we when we start any project like this, for example, incubator, and we meet people who are professionals in doing incubators, they tell us, oh, so you need 2,000, uh, 200, 2,000 euros to start, you, you need this panel of advisors, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, uh, for us, it would be completely not doable. Uh, so we start, we try to start from from scratch with one pilot project and uh, and see if we will succeed in a little bit different way than than is usual. So uh, the whole po policy is based on this attitude. Uh, in terms of community life, I would say uh, th the same as Jörg told about secret. Bitcoin meetups, the same problem we were solving here, that the common uh, public uh, Bitcoin meetups uh, were sometimes too overcrowded by speculants or journalists or people who simply don't care about the basic values and uh, and principles of Parapolis and are just going to learn how to get rich. So we've established a club of Parallel Polis, which is uh, more exclusive. Uh, there is some, there are some principles how to gain trust among the people. So only people who are approved uh, can can enter this club, and it's got its own uh, program. Uh, now it have its own leader who creates uh, creates uh, all the program and and uh, manages what what the members need and want. And I think it, this works uh, very well. Uh, l f at the at the end, I would like only to me uh, mention that uh, recently we, as a community, leave some uh, idealistic vision of leadership of our uh, organization based on totally decentralized uh, principle, without any leader and manager, just self-managing uh, community, which uh, was uh, repeatedly failing <laughs> during the uh, last five years we've opened. So, uh, so, so now we try to learn how to establish some fair and uh, transparent leadership uh, that will be able to deal with uh, uh, increasing amount of people who are 
paid for their work in in parallel police, which is almost ten people now. It's quite quite a lot. So we are like a professional firm, or we 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 should be to be able to do these punk projects like Descent Track and so on. So we we try to professionalize a little bit how how the core organization work, and we also. Uh, uh, deal a lot with new ways of communication. The, the Media Lab is one of examples uh, focused at the audio and video content. Uh, but we also have uh, lots of headaches with Facebook. Uh, so we try to search for other, other alternatives which are not. So uh, we, we at least switch more and more to Twitter and uh, explore possibilities to use, for example, telegram channels as in some ways to, to communicate uh, with, with wider communities without necessity to, uh, to be completely on Facebook, which I totally hate. Uh, but but I, I know that it's the most effective way to communicate and if you want to uh, educate, you need to communicate with as wide public as possible. Uh, and the last uh, thing I leave up to following discussion. <laughs> so thank you. That's that's what is new in, in policy. Okay. Thank you a lot. Thank you a lot, Martin. And now uh, we have representative from uh, Parallel Police Barcelona or Police Parallela exactly. Barcelona Nelson. So it's your turn. Oh no, I don't have slides. Um, so, so yeah, I'm Nelson Melina. I live in Barcelona. I came here to represent Police Parallel. So I guess we are the new kids on the block. We're still in gestation, not open yet. Um, one of our co-founders is still there, literally digging a hole and building stairs in the building. Um, so wha what we're trying to do is first, uh, I guess the project started with the Polytechnics Academy project by uh, by Amir, by Amir Taki. And, and how it came to be in Barcelona is that he met this, this co-founder, found the space and wanted to do it there. And then the other question, what, what to do else? And that's how we got connected to, uh, to Girage and, and, and to, uh, to uh, Pavel and all the, all the police parallel team. Uh, and after a few months of trying to make the perfect plan and having the perfect model, we understood that the best way to do it is just go step by step and simply open. Um, so the, the project is to have the minimum version with the co-working and the cafe by end of the year. And then from there, um, get more people involved and, and have them create whatever whatever version of the the police parallela that we can create for for Catalonia, um, and yeah, I'm looking forward for for you guys if you come to Barcelona to come and visit, even if it's not open yet, and you will see what what, what we can create. Thank you. Okay, thank you a lot, Guido. So, hey, uh, yeah, I'm Gideon from the Blockchain Hotel in Essen. It's not Berlin, uh, it's in the west of uh, Germany. Um, what we basically do, uh, what we offer is uh, workshops from the beginner uh, stuff, how to install a wallet up to developer workshops uh, on Ethereum, for example. Um, yeah, we have, as you can see, a nice rooftop <laughs> where all our panel discussions are. Maybe you can find the one or the other face uh, that you know around here. Um, we also host uh, one of the first uh, Bitcoin conferences, uh, before it was cool, I think, and um, also a monthly meetup. Um, yeah, everybody who's in Germany and uh, would uh, like to join our uh, location is welcome all the time. Uh, it's basically also a hotel, so you can also spend the night there. We have uh, very nice uh, suits, suites, sorry, uh, there should come another photo later. And this is basically our uh, winter garden where the main station is, where uh, the talks are happening. And yeah, this is the front. Uh, and we have a huge restaurant with a buff buffet all the time. It's uh, 
all day long you can uh, eat there <laughs> and uh, yeah meet the local communities as you can see it's more kind of uh, yeah easy come together it's not this no suits and yeah i think let's just scroll this uh, some impressions and uh, i'm looking forward to meet you there mm -hmm. thank you <laughs> okay. And now our representative for Parallel Police Kosice, Tomasz. Test. Okay. I just prepared some presentation slides about the evolution of Parallel Police Kosice. By the way, PPKE is just a short. <laughs> Slovaks know uh, what does it mean like PP is for Parallel Police and KE is just for Kosice. So you know what does that PPKA mean? So I got some, some uh, I would call it a roadmap or our history here, what we went through. So basically, I got it called in the chapters. The first one would be on shoulders of giants. I call it. It's the way how we began to function, and basically, uh, the whole idea of getting Palna Police Košice uh, going just emerged on the ACPP 17 Congress. That's when we were first time here, and we already there were already three core members who we, we were doing some stuff for the community, like running nodes and things like that. But we wanted to do uh, something more, and we didn't know really what to do. And at the Congress, we learned and we knew okay, so we would like to create something like this. Uh, but first, uh, it wasn't really we were, were not thinking about creating our own police because then we found out that they are working on Pana Police Bratislava. So I wrote to Rai an email that, hey, Rai, I heard about Paranapolis Bratislava. Uh, it's a cool project. We'd like to help. And he's like, uh, don't help us. Do your own. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how we got uh, to Paranapolis Bratislava in January 2018. And uh, Rai just created a wonderful day for us, uh, full of uh, um, brainstorming and meeting people from in, from Parnapolis and uh, Ines, an institution in Slovakia, a think tank. And we just uh, gathered a huge amount of motivation and ideas. And basically that that's what really started creating the whole uh, thing. And then uh, the next step I would call baby steps, when we really started uh, like thinking it can be done. And it, a huge help, of course, came from Parnapolis Bratislava because they had the members, they had Facebook, they had uh, the web page up, they had newsletter and things like that. So that's where they announced Paranapolis Košice. And that's how we started meeting people. And then those people were like, okay, this is a decentralized project. So why don't we have our own stuff, our own web page and things like that? And one of the first guys that contacted us, uh, Roman, is a web developer. And we really like people that are, I call them makers or builders. And they're not asking you what they should do, but they're saying like, oh, hey, I think you need a web page. How about I create it for you? And we're like, okay, yeah, yeah, do it, please. So, so basically, this web page and all the Instagram channels and things like that, Twitter, you can find it on the web page. Those came along during that discussion with those new people that they wanted to create something. Uh, then we were thinking how to um, somehow <coughs> get the idea out to the public or at least try to, to advertise it to the people. That's the phase that I call the guerrillas. It's, it was done in, from, from June uh, last year. And basically what we did, we were, we were doing some, we call it guerrilla marketing. We were doing some signs and putting them all over Košice with, with some funny uh, messages, like Bitcoin is dead, Bitcoin is a bubble, and things like that. So you can see the, like the preparation step. Here, like these are the signs. There were QR codes that led you to a web page which says Bitcoin is dead. Uh, this is Bitcoin is a bubble in Slovak. Uh, then this one is Bitcoin is a scam. <laughs> Bitcoin is a bubble again, and Bitcoin is dead, right? And it's 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 all over the place in Košice. And the interesting thing was that people started really asking other people that, hey guys, do you know who is responsible for this? People are saying shit and things like that, like, is it, a scam? what's this about? So we started doing like this scale marketing and it had a, an interesting impact. Then we decided to do some, some 
some open bazaar things, and we were like, okay, we should open an open bazaar, but we should be selling something, right? What, what to sell? <laughs> so the first thing, okay, we, we've got t-shirts, that's fine, and then something may be useful. So that's how one of our members, uh, he's a, the, oh, how, how, this is how one of our members decided, oh, let's do a seed word, like a place where you can put the seed words nicely. It has the Pranapolis logo, and you can use it, and it's something that, that that's useful, right? You can use the mnemonic seed. And basically, this is open source. You can find uh, how to print, 3D print it on our GitHub. Um, this was done uh, as well by Roman and some other guys around uh, the Paranapolis uh, group. And it just came out of, like, out of the community. It was something that was ordered. It was like, hey, let's do this. Uh, then we were thinking that, okay, now maybe people know about us, but they never met us, right? So, so, and we don't have a building yet in Košice, so uh, we needed a place to meet. And then uh, one, of, uh, one of the institutions, uh, or apps, or how, how you want to call it, it's called Kino Usmav, uh, they decided, well, we were talking to them, like, hey, how about we create some, some meetup or some grand opening for Paranapolis Košice so people know, know us and and uh, can we do some payments? So, so we want to have, see, we wanted to have all payments in crypto, things like that. And like, okay, sure, you can do it. So that's like a, uh, a meetup when we announced for Annapolis Koshitsa, the ATM and things like that. And that's when we basically revealed that the guerrilla marketing is something that we were doing. And if you were doing the guerrilla marketing, different QR codes were sending you to different places in the city. And once you finished it, you went to the Paranapolis web page. So that's what the, the guide. And then, so uh, basically, these are the steps that we are, we, we've done. And the next, basically, slide talks about the future. So uh, we realized that we shouldn't have like huge goals that we cannot meet. So we should have smaller goals that are doable. And uh, well, the first thing was that we already met this year that there were three of us at the beginning. So we wanted to double the core team, so it's it's more than double. It's like like seven or eight guys that help us. Um, then we decided that okay, so so now it's maybe the time to go out and start creating content regularly, like blog posts and podcasts. We are already working on it, but we tried it before, and it doesn't work uh, in a way that you start doing it and then you stop, right? So we have to prepare it in front and create some buffers. So right now we're working on that, and of course the building. Now is the time when we are. Uh, negotiating with some people about the building, because now we really feel that it should be done and it's it's needed. It wasn't needed till now, so nah, that's the goals. And basically, the lessons learned are the same, I think, <laughs> as for other guys. That yeah, we don't want to tr we don't want to be there for every single person on this planet, and we we need to uh, let people to come us to come to us and to maybe show the lights show show ourselves in the communities where it's like high chance to find people that are of the same, I would say, blood uh, type. So, and of course, make it fun, not a living. So do not try to profit from it or whatever. It will not work then. <laughs> okay, thanks. And if you want to see our webpage, you can uh, see it there or write us an email. Thanks, so, Thank you a lot, guys, for presenting your uh, communities. Now it's question time. And I'm going, I prepare some questions and I try to be fair. So you will ask one question, I'm going to ask one question. You are, we are going to ask one question, <laughs> okay. And when am I saying something? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you ask. So <laughs> the question. Okay. Put a microphone. Hello. I'm not sure uh, like who is the question is uh, referred, but uh, I guess uh, to all of you. Uh, so I have two questions. One is how you decide which member to get in and which member not to get in. Like, and the uh, second is how the membership model uh, work. Is it uh, like we work or there is a couple of uh, like people together, a group, or it's in individuals that are just renting the space for a day? And uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, the t the decision on uh, uh, who can become a member 
uh, is a decision of the community. So, yeah, this is right maybe. Right. Yeah. Maybe everybody who wants to leave before the Q&A leaves now, so we wait for a minute. Yeah. And everybody else move further down. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this Q&A will be just for us. <laughs> yeah. I want to go to that other talk as well. <laughs> <laughs> you can leave us a virtual <laughs> smuggler. <laughs> Free Bitcoin. <laughs> A ah, chodem. Jasné, určite. Mhm, dobre. It gets more cozy. All right, looks like the mainstream is over. <laughs> um, uh, so, how, how do we decide on members? So, uh, Everyone has a veto right, so if anyone in the community thinks someone is not a good fit, they're not getting in, no matter how many other people uh, like them. Mm. Uh, we try to m make this decision very carefully. We do not try to maximize the number of members currently. Uh, so that means that uh, we like to tell people to become volunteers first, kind of get to know us, we should get to know them and uh, it's, uh, uh, it's not only about growth. So, so um, by the fact that uh, it's something that takes a lot of our time, we like to spend it with people we like and we interact with. And it's basically, as uh, Jörg said, uh, that the good people stay and uh, uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> not so cool people come and leave good yeah people stay. <laughs> so um uh it's uh, it has been a quite positive experience doing it this way so uh, what i what i wanted to uh to tell you um uh, before everyone left <laughs> was um uh, and then i will answer the, the second question is that uh, when we started this in Prague uh, and also in Bratislava, uh, everyone uh, told us that we are crazy, you know, doing something only on Bitcoin, it cannot work and so on. So uh, for us, it's like telling us the sky is blue. We already knew that we are crazy. Um, uh, <laughs> but what is, um, so, so right now you're experiencing uh, survivorship bias because you are listening to people that made it and uh, there are a lot of people who were crazy Crazy, and they were not able to pull it off. The community didn't work. So, um, so the community, the people uh, who built the uh, the space or the crypto liberation community, they're really generated by the community. These places. It's not like you cannot uh, rent a building and make it work without people. So. Uh, so this is the most important aspect. And even when I'm speaking to people who want to start parallel police uh, and they start looking for a building, uh, I ask them, okay, so how many members of the community there are? And if they say three, then I say, don't look for a building, uh, look for the community first. And then you can together figure out if you get a container or, uh, or, or a bar or you meet somewhere else or it's enough to build your own com uh, uh, or built in your own space or rented space. So um, this is very important and I'm very happy to say uh, that my view is much nicer than yours right now because you guys had to look at us, but uh, w we all see uh, a lot of crazy people <laughs> that come to these conferences and uh, the, the reason that this all works is because there are enough people like you that care about it, that care about freedom and care about creating this community. So um, so I think that's the most important thing and uh, people should uh, take their time in curating the communities. Uh, you know, it's uh, uh, 
not even one community per city. In, in Berlin you have two and uh, in Bratislava we have a progress bar hackerspace as well. So if someone is not a good fit for us, they can go to the other place. So, so it's not about, um, I don't perceive uh, excluding someone, not accepting them as a member of a community as a bad thing. I think uh, it's important that everyone finds uh, the, the group of people that they like to in and, and enjoy to interact with. So was the answer to the first question, what was the second? <laughs> Ah, all, uh, so in parallel, Napolis Bratislava is only individuals, so also board members who are entrepreneurs who pay a little bit more membership fees, they're individuals. So we don't uh, um, accept uh, companies as members. We do not refuse uh, sponsorship. So even this conference is sponsored by a few companies, uh, but uh, still uh, it is uh, curated a lot. So uh, uh, most of crypto conferences have, you know, 12 general sponsors and 27, you know, silver sponsors and so on. Um, we try to uh, uh, try to work with fewer uh, companies uh, if we can and uh, make sure that these are people uh, who, uh, who we can stand behind. But as for core membership uh, that pay monthly membership fees and uh, get involved in day-to-day -day, um, operation uh, of Parallel Police, it's only individual members. Maybe, maybe but uh, other communities uh, yeah. may use a different model. So I'm Maybe I should just add Police. that, especially in Parallel Police Prague and Bratislava, we do quite um, strict uh, background checking of, of members, especially like board members. So for example, these people cannot be politician uh, in also these people cannot be related to politics in some way, cannot be uh, corrupted, for example. S and, and, but f when we know these people and uh, we, we, we are also willing to accept their privacy, so these donors may be anonymous if they want. Uh, okay, so any answers? these questions? Yeah, f uh, from my side, I think it's uh, very important to come together in uh, areas like this, but uh, we also try to reach uh, uh, people who does not have this understanding mm -hmm. yet. And that's wh why I think it's important to make these barriers not too high, to g get new people in, to educate them about these systems. And that's why by at our meetup, everybody is welcome. So. <laughs> Yeah, I think what you're saying about that, you can do it do it only if you have the community already. So maybe the question could be done like, what you do if you have a community already, with like the, the core of it working, then you do a different selection for people, right? But if you are building the core itself, it's much harder. And what we do in, in Košice is that we let those people come with us and, and usually at the beginning, that is just work, and you get nothing for it, right? And so, so you automatically lose like 99.999% of people. I hate, anyway. hate to spoil it to you, but it's the same after five years. It's oh, okay. <laughs> work. Well, I think that's a good filter anyway, yeah. that you, yeah. you let people do something. And, don't, uh, and the same, like, like somebody cannot become a board member just because you know him like one day. I will have to go through the steps, like do everything and get reputation and work on things. And after that, you, they can be one. One, one more thing, uh, s an important distinction is uh, that uh, this doesn't apply to our, let's say, customers. So like we don't uh, filter who can come and drink coffee in Bitcoin coffee. We don't screen who is going to, um, uh, to uh, the talk at the institute or to the conference. Any one of you, I, we don't know you <laughs> personally, every, every and each one of you. So, so uh, we are very open. Uh, uh, so there is kind of an internal side uh, which consists of the community, but there is also an external side where, where we kind of serve everyone. It's also different in different communities. Probably the container uh, has a different model. Uh, but that doesn't mean either that everyone uh, should be our customer. So uh, what, I, what I like to say is that, for example, by our uh, uh, crazy limitation that we only accept crypto, 
we are meeting them halfway because this is a filter you know if half of the people uh, they realize that they have to you know install a wallet and buy some weird money and the, just in order to get coffee they turn around and they leave and it's perfectly fine for for us we would like to teach them how to how to do it with crypto um but um I think this filter is very useful because uh, what it filters is for openness. So if someone has 10 minutes to, you know, go through the crypto torture and learn something new, we at least know they're open to new experiences. And if they pass this test, uh, they become our customer. But if they don't, uh, we not necessarily want them. So, so we are not... Uh, uh, a company for profit company so we're not maximizing you know income from selling coffee we are trying to um, to kind of uh, give this option of attaining more freedom but uh, they need to signal to us uh, that they're willing to at least have their head open and uh, uh, and uh, kind of give it a shot so they need that uh, there is an investment on the side of our customers that we require of them and uh, one of the investments is that they are open to this crypto experience but there are many other things so um, for a stranger entering parallel police uh, even here in prague um, the experience uh, at the beginning is not easy you know even if you go to uh, room 77, definitely to crypto container. You enter a space that is not common. It's not, you know, it's not, a, it's not McDonald's. It's not, you know, I want this and then, then you get it. And, and it, it makes people uneasy. Uh, it's uh, at the beginning not a pleasant experience, but I think that this is a feature because it's a, it's a good filter uh, about who you, who you get as, as the people who visit the space. Um, is it working? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but quite obviously, uh, there's representatives of really very different kinds of organizations sitting here on this panel. We have communities that were built on purpose. We have communities that happened. Uh, these communities have obviously entirely different goals. Um, so, um, yeah, Room 77, for example, of course, we're a bar. Everybody can come in. Everybody is welcome. I hope everybody feels comfortable when they come in. <laughs> um, but I have, I am, so we are not vetting anybody or, or choosing our customers, but I do still have one thing to say um, uh, about yeah, how to choose the members of your, of your community. Um, I think I did this little game before. Do me a favor. Everybody in the audience, just for a second, look into the face of somebody else in the audience. Do me a favor, just do it now. Just look into somebody's face. Right. I estimate there's about 100 people in this room. And I guarantee you that two to five of you just looked into the face of an undercover government spy. <laughs> um, <laughs> you may think this is you may think this is paranoid. Um, I come from Germany. I can speak for Germany. I can, <laughs> no, forget Stasi. We are much better these days. Come on, um, Germany. Germany is in Germany. Um, we know that the government is literally infiltrating every however innocent organization. It, it came out they they infiltrated a student group demonstrating against animal testing of cosmetic products. Um, we, have, we have undercover cops in every political organization and for absolutely sure in every um, crypto organization. And um, I'm saying this because I have an advice. If you, whatever kind of community in this area you build around Bitcoin, crypto, freedom, uh, liberty, whatever. You have to expect government spies uh, come and infiltrate you. And the best way to spot them is they are usually the really radical guys who suggest to do criminal stuff. This is, this is also not kidding. Um, uh, 
the 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 majority of people still looks at bitcoiners and crypto enthusiasts and anarchists and whatever they call themselves in a who not sure are they evil or are they not evil the uh, state apparatus um wants us to look evil of course they send people in who radicalize us so if you if you form any kind of community around these topics and you have a new very enthusiastic member who keeps suggesting that we should hack the banks to show how insecure they are or that we should distribute these stolen credit card numbers to show how insecure mastercard is um, you have quite a good chance that you spotted the government spy already um, I, I just thought i'd throw that in or they binge watched uh, mr robot <laughs> or they binge watched Mr. Robot <laughs> for <laughs> for the past weekend. Okay. So uh, now it's my turn. I'm going to ask a question. So what was initial stimulus, like initial reason uh you just said let's fucking do it and you created your community. What was the stimulus, the initial stimulus you, you did it? So from my side, uh, we just thought it's not uh, everything is happening in Berlin and we lo looked around uh, in the west of Germany and there was nearly nothing, just one lo small meetup in Cologne, it's years ago now, it was one of the first in West Germany and uh, that's why we decided to, to uh, yeah, bring uh, our area closer to this cryptocurrency and um, yeah, that's the main reason. And uh, also our co-founder, the Linux Hotel, is running uh, education since 15 years now. Um, they are also interested in this uh, uh, field, cryptocurrencies. Um, that's why we decided to run this concept of uh, seminar workshop hotel. Yeah. Yeah. For us, it was a mix of different things. So there was the Polytechnics Academy project, but also when I came back from London to uh, to Barcelona, I realized that there were like a lot of developers, a lot of uh, blockchain companies present, but there was no, c they were not connected. It was very, very decentralized, a little bit too much. Um, so the, I thought having one spot, one central spot where everyone connects, everyone collaborate, everyone meet each other, everyone knows what's, what's happening, then you can, from there, you can have project emerge, you can have more coherence. Uh, so that's, that's the one of the main drive, yeah. And uh, by the way, I think it's cool to hang out in uh, uh, online chats or uh, forums and blogs, uh, but you definitely need a place where you can get in touch uh, on an I and I level. And yeah, that is very important. Well, I think well, I already told like, like the whole story, but I like this idea what you were saying that the forums are nice, but the real other filter is to meet the person in person because body language can tell you a lot. So if you find that person, that, that something is weird about that person, then it's probably like that. <laughs> that's my like. That's most of the time like that. It's maybe because the I, the the ideology or the way of thinking of the person is different than yours. So so it's another. In uh, in case of Peropolis Prague, it's quite notorious. But um, you and your I came and told us that you got a cool hacker space in Bratislava mm. called Progress Bar. You, should, you guys should have something similar in Prague, there are just like these hardcore hardware hackerspace, but but uh, not that cool as, as uh, pro Progress Bar is. So you say, okay, these, cool are, these uh, guys Maker are space. inspiring. Maker, space. And uh, we know almost shit about what they are saying, so we should manage a place where we will gather as smart guys as these are, and they will tell us everything. Uh, but one the imp important point was when we really uh, attended hackerspace and we saw how exclusive place it is in mean in terms of uh, it is hardly achievable for people from outside uh, and when we found this house because at, at the beginning we were also searching for some 100 square meters uh, x uh, flat uh, uh, that is possible to finance from some and just uh, small membership fees of a small group of people but when we found this house we realized that we can totally reverse it make it totally open make it a, a, as much inclusive as possible 
uh, and this was triggered to to think totally differently about the concept of hackerspace and uh, elaborate this parapolis concept. Yeah, for us the progress was there was a lot of talking for years, and uh, sooner or later a few of us get fed up with talking. We just wanted to experiment and build and create, and so it was actually started by by two people uh, completely funding that themselves, um, wasting all their Bitcoin um, and setting up the space on their own. And whoever liked it stuck to it, and who didn't, didn't. That was our filter as well. <laughs> so for uh, uh, me personally, uh, uh, per personal motivation was that I was envious that Prague had barrel police that <laughs> I kind of <laughs> helped to build, uh, so uh, so progress bar was an inspiration for parallel police in Prague. But then I realized that I don't want progress bar; I want uh, parallel police in Bratislava as well. So it was the same motivation inverted. So uh, because every time when I arrived to Prague, uh, to me Prague doesn't exist. It's a totally boring city. The only thing that I do, I uh, get out of the train. I get to parallel police and then I spend all the time here. So, um, uh, so I wanted that, you know, uh, I wanted to cut short the train ride uh, to Prague and to uh, k kind of uh, make this experience walking distance from my apartment. So that was a, a personal motivation. Another personal motivation, uh, I cannot speak for all our members because everyone has their own uh, reasons for, uh, for sure. Uh, but for me, um, I think that um, uh, if I didn't do it, if I didn't uh, participate and try to uh, build this crypto ecosystem now, it would be like, uh, you know, selling dot fo uh, dog food in the 90s. You know, the, the internet revolution was happening. Most projects were bullshit. Uh, you know, uh, there was a lot of talk, a lot of, you know, also Lambos, everyone. Uh, uh, that uh, started to work for an internet technological startup, got the keys to a new car and, and an apartment. So that was this negative part. But still, uh, that was when the internet was really created and wh when, when it really bloomed. And um, if uh, now when this crypto revolution and uh, using these technologies for increasing personal freedom which uh, w which is the real reason why we are doing it if i was uh, i don't know uh, doing websites uh, it wouldn't uh, be challenge and i i probably i would be pissed off in 10 years that uh, i i did something that was not uh, as important and as fun even though i know that most projects will probably fail so i want to be part of this and um uh why not start, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, next uh, shitcoin or do an ICO and do a non-profit, which is totally crazy, is that uh, with Parallel Police uh, I get uh, exposed and I help to build the whole ecosystem. So I don't need to invest my time in this one idea, one company, but uh, my goal, um, uh, my personal goal, but uh, many people in Parallel Police share this goal is uh, to improve the ecosystem. So um, one of the good outcomes of this project is that we get these board members, they support us, but they also interact together. They create companies together, they create projects together, and we are not in the stage of competition right now. It doesn't matter who wins, you know, if there's one company making ATMs and other company making ATMs, uh, ninety percent uh, of the time they should cooperate, uh, not compete, because uh, we all are invested, uh, both monetarily but also our energy is uh, invested in this crypto community, and it doesn't matter who wins. I don't care if this or that wallet is the best, or this hardware wallet is the best, or this cryptocurrency is the best. Um, if any of these projects actually delivers on this pro uh, on, on their promise i'm happy uh, and uh, if i can say that i was somehow a part of that i'm happy as well so that's the real reason thank you uh, now 
question from the audience. So it seems like your different communities have these different uh, sort of like modules that you piece together, the cafe, this, that, the other thing. Um, one thing I've been thinking about is how like a hostel could serve as so like a pretty strong socialization, socializing uh, of these ideas to sort of normal people, as well as providing services to crypto travelers. So obviously we have the, the crypto hotel who can give us some insights some learnings. And I'm also interested in the other communities have you explore this as one of a potential uh, expansion of your, of your current community. To be honest, I didn't get the question in general. <laughs> what, 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 you want to know which target audience are? So the question for the communities that don't do a hostel, why not? Is there a specific reason? Have you considered it and found it not to be a good idea? And if it's not a good idea, why not? And the, you running a hotel, which yeah. is more or less the same thing as a hostel, slightly less social perhaps, um, you know, so do you suggest the other communities do that? Is it successful? To, to be honest, uh, the hotel exists already before the blockchain hotel. It's a rebranding, so we just occupied it, kind of. And uh, it only be, we decided to do this because uh, our co-founder is uh, the Linux Hotel, and they are doing this since 15 years. And the hotel was there, and the co-working space was there, and we kind of rebranded it and brought the community to there. So that's the main reason why this is called a hotel. So, yeah. Um, I guess I guess we I can go on on that because uh, so. The academy has an aspect of co-living, so there might be uh, an ability of people to stay at the space directly uh, if they go through the through the through the program. But also in the neighborhood, one thing that we thought of doing is maybe rent one flat or two flats. So that, for example, if you are a blockchain company, like most of us work remotely, right? You you want to meet face to face at some point. Uh, and Barcelona is an amazing city, so uh, offer the possibility like you come for a week, you work in the co-working, and then you stay in an apartment next to it. So that's definitely something that we thought about, but it's still very early in the process to know exactly how and, and, and how much and all the details. But yeah, I think that's a, that's a good service to offer. It might be uh, expensive and complicated to do, but it's definitely a good thing. Uh, so for us, we're um, allowing people to uh, sleep on our couch and um, we're also building a, a special container that you can remotely um, book. Um, sooner or later that will be ready. My personal dream, because I actually agree with you, is to have something like a capsule hotel in containers that you can actually move to conferences, etc. and actually take the whole environment with you. <laughs> Um, I, I forgot to mention when I uh, was telling what's new uh, uh, in Parapolis Prague, uh, as I told about a new co-working uh, place, uh, there is a one, one uh, small room that we have established as a, um, as a dormitory with four beds, so uh, especially when, when some people from different Parapolises or other communities come, they are totally welcome to, to use uh, this uh, this small apartment to to stay overnight. So uh, yeah, this is our uh, for this congress we use it for the first time. We're completing the beds right uh, in the uh, Thursday afternoon or evening. So so it's also freshly new feature of Parapolis here to save money for Airbnbs and so on. So you can just contribute to Parapolis and stay almost in the house. <laughs> I think that uh, hotels have a really good uh, opportunities to to so uh, help people socialize, um, uh, uh, but uh, what I realized that most of the socializing uh, happens uh, really in the hotel bar and in the cafeteria. Sometimes you invite people over to party to your room, but most of the socializing happens in the cafeteria. So. Uh, it is a very uh, low-cost way to just extract what uh, um, what is the essential part that builds the community uh, from the whole hotel concept into uh, into the cafeteria itself. But of course, if uh, people would like to experiment also with accommodation, I think it's a good idea, and uh, I think people should explore all the options that are there. Another thing that uh, not a lot of people talk about and I think is a 
great idea is having a crypto sauna, which we uh, <laughs> would like to do, uh, do. For some people, it's a privacy issue because mostly people go naked into the sauna, but uh, our will be surveillance-free zone when we, when we do it. But that's also a way how people socialize. So I think... Um, I think uh, there is nothing wrong, wrong with experimenting with uh, with these ideas and trying them out. Uh, what I would like to ask of any one of you, if you do it, please share your experience. Uh, 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 a hotel in uh, or a crypto hotel in SN is not a competition for a crypto hotel in Prague. So if uh, if we can learn something from other people's experiences and apply them, then our community can grow more. So, so for me, there are infinite number of learning opportunities from all these uh, other ideas on what what we can build and what uh, what, what we can do. I think a hotel or a hostel is a good idea. A sauna is a great idea. And, uh, there are many other. Uh, one part of our building is also uh, in a shared economy, shared department with eight rooms in our kitchen and of course also, also sauna. So uh, for a hackathon or something like this, you can come there and spend, for example, five days and nights together and be productive. And we, we also have special conditions then for developers, for example. Mm. So feel free to join. <laughs> okay, thank you. Now I have a question. Uh, so last week I last week I spent four days in the Panaminian uh, jungle, rainforest, uh, in the community called Kaluyala. And it's completely independent community out of the government, out, out of the state, in the, in the center of jungle. Uh, they produce their uh, electricity, they have a satellite internet, uh, everything they eat there, they produce there. So they, they're almost 100% sustainable. So this is exactly my question I'd like to ask you. What about your sustain sustainability? So do you care about it? Or do you have some mechanism? Especially I, I know that uh, in container you, you really care about this topic. So uh, do you care about sustain sustainability and how to survive longer time in the future as your, uh, as your community or your place? Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Okay. I have just a very brief comment on this. Mm -hmm. uh, my, uh, my and all our experience in Parapolis, uh, Parapolis is by design experimental project. And when you want to sustain, you have to still progress, develop, and experiment mm -hmm. with new new things. Otherwise, you will probably uh, die soon. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, the, the uh, st uh, not to just remain on something that works and if it's approved, so okay, we we just repeat it uh, is is not a good idea, and you still have to progress and test. The same is with this congress. We um, even though it seems that everything is perfect and tuned, then we can just repeat the same model every year. We inevitably will have to innovate. We will have to search for new ways how to create program and uh, so on. So uh, I think that's the challenge for any uh, any uh, community sitting here. Uh, so for us, the one of the core tenants of our project is this ability to move instead of getting into trouble. Um, and mobility forces you to have some um, preparation, so to speak. So, number one, we have um, a specific laid away budget for emergencies. Uh, that is the financial sustainability aspect. So, um, we have a, a contingency budget if you run into trouble for too long or too much. Um, then we have, um, b because when you're when you plan to be mobile you might end up somewhere where infrastructure isn't available or not available yet, because it takes time to set up infrastructure. So we're actually trying to have like some minimal uh, water, wastewater, uh, energy communication setup that um, allows us to at least exist. It's not comfortable, but it allows us to exist. And um, as soon as we get access to the infrastructure or 
um, scale our own sources, then it becomes comfortable. Um, so there's like this, uh, like a backup, uh, backup power system. We have that for water, we have that for wastewater, uh, energy, communication, and so on. Thank you. Uh, what I uh, also like, uh, there's a distinction between sustainability in order to be a long-term project so that you don't burn your resources. Other people mean something else by sustainability, meaning you know you um, uh, you um, grow your own food, uh, generate enough electricity, and so on. For us, uh, we uh, think that it's not such a big problem to rely on outside markets, and we kind of would like to use division of labor. These are good inventions. So. Um, uh, so for us, the more important part is uh, sustainability uh, of the project in terms of uh, the community, that we still have people who are actually interested, it, interested in this project, um, and also financial sustainability, so we don't, you know, burn uh, volunteer time and, you know, run out of our mental and physical energy. Um, which uh, is we didn't reach this point yet. We rely a lot of uh, a lot on uh, volunteer work, and we need to increase the level of sustainability in this way. Also, uh, though, uh, uh, this has other side, uh, which means that uh, if we realize that we are not sustainable, first of all, it's our fault. We don't do something right, so we perceive it as a uh, signal uh, which uh, which comes from uh, from the uh, you know from the energy management let's say but uh, it includes finance as well so uh, for me if uh, there's a point when we run out of money run out of volunteer energy I'm totally happy to close the space and do something else so so I don't think that uh, sustainability is the only goal that we should strive for. Um, all projects have their uh, place in time and space and in the market. And uh, companies go bankrupt all the time when something better comes. So for me, uh, I would be very happy if we get outcompeted by something better. Uh, I just want. I just hope that it is better. <laughs> okay. Okay. I just wanted to answer something from my side. Well, for us, uh, sustainability means to have, if we have small it's projects, possible, yeah. mm. try to create them in a way, thinking about the worst case scenario, and always thinking that, okay, this project cannot be that big that it will break our neck if it fails. So that's what we are trying to do. Uh, <coughs> yeah, yeah we, we are still in the, uh, the age of experience, I think, so, yeah. Um, so I think the question has been answered for the most part for the German project, but uh, for the uh, various police uh, existing and uh, upcoming, where does the initial funding come from? I mean, if you look around, the infrastructure is really good, and I'm sure there is uh, quite a lot of money put into uh, these beautiful places. Where does it come from? So it, I think it's a question on me. Uh, so... Uh, there are two concepts. One is Parapolis uh, represented by the building and a program it's co it contains. It's got one budget and the, and the Congress it has one uh, own budget as well, which is separated uh, from from Parapolis daily operation. So Parapolis on one hand, uh, uh, in terms of the daily operations, um, costs about. Uh, 350,000 crowns uh, per month, which is uh, in euros, like, help me to recalculate, uh, 13,000 uh, euros per month, which is the, the basic cost we, we have to bear every, every month. And at the very beginning, when the costs uh, were lower, it was from significant part uh, covered by our board of donors which is a uh, type of membership uh, where uh, usually people from uh, 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 from business and uh, some successful businessmen 
uh, help us to cover uh, uh, the cost with, with their strictly uh, done uh, set uh, fees. Uh, but besides that, we got other memberships, for example, Coworking uh, has its own membership that helps to uh, to cover other other activities. Uh, Bitcoin Coffee is almost uh, around zero. It was uh, always losing concept, but uh, but now we are getting closer and closer that it's uh, at least on zero. <laughs> Hopefully, one day it will even generate money. Uh, then, uh, when when we had very hard times, uh, when we owed uh, a lot of money, really a lot of money, like three monthly budgets. Uh, we we helped uh, with some commercial uh, events uh, in in Peropolis, uh where we try to curate which companies uh, come. Uh, some fails happened as well. For example, the national railroad <laughs> operator <laughs> had some uh, event there which we didn't know about because it was via some agency. Uh, so we learned the lesson and we asked more questions before it. But uh, it happens uh, when we have really financial troubles. When there are some when now now I think we are in a shape where where it works and and we've got some. It's it's not that. Not bad. We we already uh, know how to keep the budget uh, not too tight, and there there are other projects that sometimes generate money, sometimes don't. Uh, 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 Congress uh, uh, for last wa two three years uh, brings always some uh, money to Paralpolis as well because it uh, it it sometimes generates money. Uh, uh, so so this is also some significant income then we can then invest to projects like distant track as well uh, etc so so the budget has really lots of uh, lots of boxes <laughs> and uh, it's always a question of uh, good luck good program uh, a good uh, a good uh, exchange price of crypto etc etc that that are factors uh, that um, have some footprints on our financial condition uh, I would like to add, uh, well, Parallelpolis in Bratislava is very similar to uh, where we get our money from, but um, I think I would rephrase the question because if people ask this question like this, uh, it's uh, going, uh, it's, I, I think it most often leads to a lot of trouble. So the right question to ask is, who are we serving? Who, who are we helping? What are we improving? So... Um, we are here for the community, so community in a way uh, has to generate some income. Uh, usually they buy uh, hipster flat whites and bulletproof coffees and uh, pay for, uh, for uh, um, entrance fees for, uh, for events and so on. So this is one source, but uh, we don't want to ask a question how do we get money from the community? We want to ask what can we do for the community? And then the second part is that we can charge for. But uh, the first part is more important. What are we actually bringing? So even the board members, um, we are not asking, you know, uh, who is willing to give us money. We are asking, okay, we are building ecosystems. Who, who are the people that want that have their um, their interest in these ecosystems being improved are there crypto investors meaning investors that invested in uh, cryptocurrencies themselves are there investors that invest in companies uh, are these pe uh, people entrepreneurs who would like uh, more freedom in uh, entrepreneurship are these people who are successful in life and want to improve their personal freedom so uh, again, the, the question to ask is not where to get money from, but who do we serve, what do we provide, and what is the value of that? And then that answers all the, all the money questions. Uh, and then the second part is luck. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, I have a special question that may be interesting f for all people. So the question is, did you have any problems with the government or did you feel any pressure from the government so especially german guys <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
let's make it quick. From our side, not a uh, special problem, special issues, but Germany in general is uh, kind of 19th century uh, area in for crypto. And uh, we are uh, not providing any, uh, we are, as I said, conference and meetups and uh, workshops, and they are not, there is no no reason why they can ban it or something like this. It's uh, about education and come together. So, yeah. We don't ho have any own token or something like this. <laughs> yeah, Jürgen probably has a different opinion about um, I can clearly state that Room 77 is the most tax audited bar on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> um, uh, this is also due to lack of knowledge on, on, on the side of the, of the, of the tax people. Like they, they see Bitcoin and you must be a tax evader. Um, <coughs> Whereas I'm like, I mean, I mean, we don't accept credit cards or anything. That means we accept uh, fiat cash and Bitcoin. And I told tax uh, uh, people from the tax office, tax auditors, that I take it as a personal insult that they think I'm so stupid to cheat taxes with the five or ten percent that we make in Bitcoin and not with the ninety or ninety-five percent we make in cash fiat money. Um, uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's literally all, all I can say about that. Um, um, yeah, the German government is very unfriendly towards Bitcoin. I think it's the most uh, hostile, uh, Bitcoin hostile government, at least in Europe. Uh, one good example for is the local Bitcoin. They uh, cancelled their service in Germany f three or four years ago, and I think we have four countries in the world where local Bitcoin does not act. One is North Korea, maybe, and one is Germany, and that's ridiculous, I think. And uh, no exchange in Germany. I mean, it speaks for... Oh, we have one. That's why we founded one, uh, bitcointreff.de, four years ago. So you can use it instead of local Bitcoin for German area. Mm -hmm. uh, for us, um, uh, we experienced uh, trouble uh, in a way that every... Uh, Slovak entrepreneur experiences trouble, meaning we um, wanted a simple building construction permit for our renovation and it took uh, more than a year. It's not uh, probably because anyone is hostile against us, it's just uh, uh, that uh, for some weird reason you need permits to uh, do basic home renovation <laughs> or building renovation. So. So far, uh, Slovak government uh, doesn't um, attack us spe specifically. Uh, on the other hand, they uh, they bother everyone uh, in general. So our trouble with the government is sadly the same that uh, a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of personal uh, uh, a lot of persons uh, experience. Uh, there is, um, uh, there is of course, uh, the whole situation about crypto. We have uh, probably uh, the worst uh, law on crypto taxation, uh, even worse than in Germany, because you have to pay taxes <laughs> on profits, but you cannot offset losses. So you always have to pay positive taxes. Um, the problem, uh, or uh, not the problem, the feature is that uh, Slovak government is thankfully very inefficient in doing anything, in <laughs> enforcement <laughs> of laws. So, um, so um, I like to say, uh, I, I uh, say this uh, after experiencing uh, the Panamanian government and how they function. Uh, it is uh, often a very good thing that the government doesn't work and the government services don't work because um, uh, because uh, then they ca can cause less trouble. Of course, it's not a universal truth, but uh, for some people that want to improve uh, the function of the government through electronization or through, uh, for example, uh, uh, I don't think that the tax laws are that different between Germany and Czech Republic or Slovakia. The problem is that the tax office in Germany actually does something and works, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which York uh, experienced problem, yeah. firsthand. And uh, 
um, uh, it's the same with, for example, in Germany, if you download uh, a, a movie or a music from Torrent from your own IP address, uh, you will get a fine of two or three thousand euros and it's very hard to fight it. We have the exactly same law, uh, but no one is able to enforce it because no one because they don't know how. So um, it's not about what is written in the magic documents of the government that uh, guys in the parliament vote for, but what the government does and actually does. So for us, the experience is that uh, we're uh, sometimes very sad and sometimes very happy that the government uh, doesn't work that much. So you need to pay more taxes than it works. <laughs> exactly. So, so um, asking, what about what about the Czech Czech tax office and the Paralelní police Prague? Yeah, I, generally I can tell that Paralelní police is privileged by the state, not prosecuted by privileged. Uh, it, it's strange, and we didn't uh, expect this when we found it. We hoped that there will be lots of clash and conflicts and. We'll be chaining our bodies to the entrance uh, <laughs> in front of the TV cameras and so on, but nothing like this happens really. And the opposite happens, we are privileged. So for example, when there came the uh, obligation of uh, electronic evidence of payments, we just put our, on our um, uh, door statement that we will not <laughs> do that <laughs> simply uh, and that we don't agree with that. And uh, when, when the uh, when the officers that should enforce this rule came, they just started the procedure two and a half years ago and never never made the second step like to continue with it. Or they just made a protocol and that that's how it finished. Or I don't know if finished, but so far, <laughs> so far, that was the only uh, only action they have taken. And there there is one uh, interesting story as well. There. There came a professional lawyer to the to the coffee late in the evening, and he he bought a glass of wine and he insisted that he must be uh, it must be possible to pay in check cash because this is how the law is written when you when you provide some services on Czech, in Czech Republic you are obliged to accept Czech currency. And there was Roman Tietz, one of the co-founders, uh, <laughs> who uh, who met this guy and. And he said, uh, sorry, I can't help you. Uh, uh, I only can do that. I can pay it for you. But he said, no, I don't want you to invite me. I simply want to pay. <laughs> and and Romand is OK. So give me your give me your note, uh, the bank note. He, he gave it to him. He smashed it to pieces. And he said, huh? This, uh, that, that's, that's done. OK. <laughs> so the guy called police. Uh, <laughs> that uh, that Romantis is damaging Czech currency, and later on, just the Czech National Bank stated that mm, it's irrelevant because the the value of the banknote is like uh, uh, 0.2 crowns. So it's such a small damage that they <laughs> won't do anything about that. So <laughs> so the, the state never made any significant action against us we got couple we had a couple of controls like hygiene all, all these owns uh, from from the office were kind uh, very closing eyes yes we understand that uh, that you are non-profit and yeah, yeah let's just put something small some some small breaches there and yeah we had the <laughs> same experience with the Oh. It's not fashionable, but uh, yeah, that's how it is. Maybe, uh, maybe I, sh I should just uh, clarify that Paralelní police Prague is the only organization in the Czech Republic which publicly boycott and ignore, uh, publicly boycotts and ignores uh, EET, which is called Electronic Evidence of Transaction, which basically means that all companies, all restaurants, all bars in the Czech Republic, they need to send immediately information about each uh, cash transaction uh, to uh, to the check tag office uh, and and Paralni police because of of their ideas uh, like and protecting privacy uh, decided to officially publicly boycott EET. So this is quite unique because a lot of people from Czech Republic they used to visit Paralni police and just and just say what what what, what how it's possible? How how it's possible they don't like a 
completely boycott like a Czech law. And we are just doing that all the time. And, uh, so so and in Slovakia, well, we don't have anything with the government yet because of the building, right? But when we were creating the organization, we had the trouble with the bank because we had written that we will be doing educational stuff uh, in economics as well. And they were like, oh, they, they want to, do, to tell people how this stuff works. Uh, we're not sure we want to allow them to have a bank account. So it took some, some it was really interesting. And after that, the, the ladies were talking to each other like, oh, look at them. They're like, they're like some IT guys. They will teach Excel or whatever. <laughs> so let them open to nothing like that. So, so that's like yeah. a weird story about the banks. Okay, so unfortunately, I, we are out of the time. So we have to f uh, finish the discussion. So thank you guys a lot for coming here. And thank, thank, thank you a lot for your question.